Yes. Yeah, that's good. Okay, good. Thank you. So imagine you're, you're an English steam train enthusiast, you're very into big steam engines, you know, you like to read about the history and the different railway lines and the different manufacturers and all the rest of this stuff, and you have a forum with all your friends. And there's some new kid on the forum who's about 12 or 14, he's reading Wikipedia and he's really interested in all this stuff, and you kind of get chatting to him, and you know, he's, he's, you assume that he's in Shropshire or Ireland or, you know, he might even be in you know, some place like California. Um, and then he says, by the way, we've got an outbreak of Ebola in my village. I live in Malawi, and I'm wondering if anybody knows how to treat this particular set of symptoms and whether it's Ebola or not because my sister is sick. And the whole mental world of your steam train enthusiast completely collapses because what they've just discovered is they're talking to a 12-year-old kid that saw a steam train in a museum when they were seven and got obsessed with it but the kid is in Milan, and their complete model of the world collapses. Right? This is coming. It's going to be the worst culture shock the human race has ever seen, because the poor are coming to us. Right? Part of the danger of Facebook is it makes it extremely difficult for poor people and rich people to communicate. Buffers and buffers and buffers and layers and layers and layers, unlike email, where it's a simple flat space. Bam, right? What happens when you start getting 419 scam messages from refugee camps only now go real. Right? I am in this refugee camp, here are my GPS coordinates, here's my Facebook, here's my blog, here's my Twitter, here's my PayPal, here's my Flatter, here's my Bitcoin. Send me some money. I'm hungry. I'm really smart. I will go through your email and I will take out the spam. I will help your kids answer their college questions. Right? I used to be a school teacher and I'm stuck in this bloody refugee camp and my kids are hungry. Sort me out. Right? We have no idea what's coming off the internet when we get little Android phones with decent operating systems in every single poor person's hand. There's a decent chance that it's going to break Western civilization like a wall being split with an axe. Because the guilt that we all share for colonialism and for the exploitation of the poor that goes on all the time. Every piece of hardware in this room was manufactured by people who have no political freedom in China. Every single piece has a little piece of Chinese fascism inside of it, which is why you paid 1,100 euros and not 5,500 euros. All of that stuff is coming up and it's going to hit us really freaking hard, really before we're culturally ready for it. All I can say is, take a holiday in the third world, take a good look around, those people are going to come online soon. And the challenges that we have with the current round of economic difficulty now, people use words like collapse or austerity or whatever it happens to be, compared to the cultural chaos and the need for radical political change that is going to come as the villages come online, as the refugee camps come online, as the uh, slaveholding nations come online, um, as the slums come online, it's going to blow our world to pieces. And we're going to have to negotiate that within the next 10 years. So as you guys face this first round of trouble, you know, I'm facing my own round of trouble where I live in Ireland, a bit less when I'm in the UK. As we actually have to face that stuff head on, the next wave coming after it is the people with much worse problems who are going to turn around and be like, look, I understand that you guys are having some trouble, but you're still making 17 times our national average income, and you buy products from us at $11 a ton, because every time we raise the prices, you assassinate our president. We're having a problem here. And these people are going to start talking to us and asking us to change our ways. They're going to start blogging about the fact that their kid sister has just died of malnutrition. I've had my PayPal up here you know, for 17 days, and all I've got is $5.51, and I can't get it out because of the bloody terms of service, and my kid sister is dead. Jesus Christ, this is a disaster. Yeah, it is. Right. We're in the easy part right now. To put yourself in the global 1%, you only require an average income of 36,000 US dollars a year, which is about, what, 26,000 euros? That makes you global 1%. Occupy, oh, those people over there, they're the 1%, they're totally screwing us. Oh my god, where did all those people come from? There are 99 of them, uh, it's me. Right? Occupy was completely turned around the wrong way 
because Occupy wanted to believe that if they got their politics right, they could have some of the stuff from over there. They didn't want to look behind them, all the people over here who were trying to get their share of the pie. Right? How poor would we feel if we had to pay fair trade prices for our coffee, for our tea, for our sugar, for our gasoline, for our electronics, for our clothes? If all of the countries that produce the things you wear and the things you use had full political freedom for workers, what would the prices really be like? We live in an artificially inflated bubble of prosperity that is extracted from the poor at gunpoint. And if we're going to be fighting for freedom, it's eventually going to have to go beyond software, it's going to have to go beyond hardware, it's going to have to go right to the ends of the earth, because we're heading towards the point where asking questions about why not a global democracy becomes realistic. Because after they all have telephones, and after they all have names in the database, we can start asking questions about why they don't all have phones. And that's really where the fun begins. The United Nations automatically assumes that you have political representation at home, and therefore you don't need any direct representation from ordinary people at the United Nations. This turns out to be absolutely not true. Most of the countries in the United Nations guide their citizens at home. They have no direct representation, and so the UN is not an effective political representation of the people. It's simply an oligarchy of states intending to protect, perpetuate the existence of the state. Once we've got internet in the villages, it becomes possible to realistically talk about one world, one man, one vote. Or I should say one world, one person, one vote. Now, can we imagine the consequences of that? And that's not so far from where we are in the world, right? You know, browser ID, if you get that stuff right, becomes a hard enough identity potential, you could use it for voting. Really seriously, you could do this. Or maybe Facebook will do it, and then we'll all be screwed because Facebook will own the voter rolls, and once in a while you lose a couple of hundred million. The fight for global democracy, and I'm not even sure democracy is the right thing to build, but the fight for global democracy goes from being theory to practice by 2020. That, does this begin to sound like that? All the processes that run that transition need to be as open as possible. All the software needs to be free if you want it And the interesting part of the free software story is just about to begin. Because of the artifact that connects you to the world, right? the, the little Android phone that takes you from the 4th century to the 21st century, if that phone is fully open and you control it, then you get political rights out of it. But if it runs proprietary software and runs on a proprietary network and they can turn you off and they don't like what you say, you get no political rights out of it at all. You know, software freedom is human freedom and it's about to become a real critical issue because we're going to start having people who only have software to connect them to the real world. They only have software to connect them to their political rights. They only have software to give them a path to life and freedom. And that's going to be the real challenge, and it's coming faster than anybody sees. All of this current round of economic austerity stuff and all the trouble in the developed world states is a tiny little war. The real show is about here.